Hey, welcome back. I want to show you this thing. This is a Leica MC6 microscope, stereo microscope. Uh, a very good friend issued me with this microscope because, <laughs> because I was looking for a stereo microscope for the shop for a very, very long time and couldn't find something that, that really s struck with me. So he told me to, to just take this. Um, it didn't came with a stand. In fact, it came with a stand, but the stand was a boom arm with about a meter length and just too bulky for my shop and also too flexible. Uh, right away he told me that I had, would have to build something myself. So I designed, I designed this contraption here, which is a, like a, a Scara robot uh, with two swivel arms that can fold up into themselves or almost into themselves like this go back into this this notch of my shelving up here and be almost out of the way or I can just pull it out to use it as you can see the eyepiece is very up high here but on this Leica uh, this has the articulating head and I can just get it down to the right height so I can work without overstraining uh, my body. Um, I'm, I'm quite used to use uh, stereo microscopes at work. Um, we have them everywhere. <laughs> um, we have Eschenbach microscopes, which are a bit cheaper. Very decent microscopes for general shop use. They don't have zoom, they have fixed uh, magnification. This one has zoom. Uh, we have 25 times magnification up here on the eyepieces. We have 0.63 times magnification down here in a uh, an additional lens. And the microscope body here goes from 0.63 times magnification up to four times magnification. That in overall gives me uh, a range of magnification from 10 times at lowest setting up to 63 times at the highest setting here. Um, that's a very good range. 10 times is great for doing uh, manual work on the microscope. Soldering, deburring, and as you can see it's, it's right now set to to a about 150, 170 millimeters above my bench. That's a good height to work under the microscope uh, in your hands. It has, it has, of course, back here the focal adjusting stage, which allows height adjustment and setting your focus. It has very large travel. The, the boom arm that I made, or the, the, the stand here is relatively rigid for how far it, it reaches out. This is 30 by 30 millimeter box tubing and the joints are welded on steel tubings bored out and then I have Egos plastic bushings pressed in them and there is a hardened and ground bolt running in them and all is axially preloaded so this joint is super rigid and doesn't move on its own. It's it has a little bit of drag. Same for this joint, also Ego's plastic bushings in here. Moves very nice and back here also. The height adjustment is not finished yet. I just have a shaft collar here where this arm drops down onto. Like this. But, but in general use you have not to, adjust, to, to move this very much. For what I do, this will probably stay in place now. And right now it's just bolted to a steel plate that I clamped to my bench. Um, I might probably change this and have the, this arm here come from above, so I do not have anything sitting on my bench. Good friend gave me that, that idea to, to mount it overhead. It has a ring light, a fiber optic ring light. So no LEDs in here. Uh, 
it has the fibers coming out here and they and they terminate in this coupler here in this, in this surface here that's all the fibers coming from here through here coming out here and it's ground flat and normally you have a light source with bulb with a light bulb in it transformer um, that it gives the light for the ring light but I have that too it's still in the car it's very bulky very large uh, I wasn't too happy with it so I figured uh, a good uh, LED flashlight would do the same I, I bought a inexpensive LED flashlight rechargeable off eBay I removed the front ring here which has a fine thread I, I machined an adapter out of Delrin that screws on here and there's a press fit or a very tight sliding fit for this coupler and I have my I have my ring light here lighting up let's just hold on with three radial screws Just like this and here you can see all this here are individual fibers uh, fiber uh, opti optic fibers gas fibers coming out and it's it's ground flat on the end and that's where the light comes out and this is this is just spooky cool <laughs> and uh, I have two two brightnesses uh, flash mode because it's a tactical flashlight and off also I can set it to uh, SOS if I ever uh, get lost with my ship because they cannot sell a normal flashlight anymore that has just on and off ramp over so this goes on here just clamped in place and you're good to go uh, very nice microscope really um, I would not have bought this microscope this is uh, way above my price leak and I'm really grateful that I got it. It's really a beautiful instrument and I'm very happy to have it here in the shop. <laughs> um, I, will, I will try to get you some, some pictures through the eyepiece and look at some things. Okay, I brought the camera up to the eyepiece and I tried to get it in focus. It's not very easy. Uh, what you're looking right now is a 10 millimeter three fluid carbide end mill at 10 times magnification uh, as you can see it's it's a little bit chipped here here and on this edge too and we can look at the flute at the cutting flutes and they still look quite decent this one is a little bit chipped here right in the center where the crosshair is here it's chipped and that way you can look at cutting tools work pieces uh, very very closely and decide if they are good you can see uh, tiny burrs on parts you can do work under the microscope you can use tiny stones or files or scrapers to deeper parts uh, and that that's really nice here is a uh, that's a 0.8 millimeter end mill ball end mill and as you can see we don't see much it's very tiny so let's let's increase the magnification oh, there we go that's my dirty finger there we go that's the that's the ball end mill and this this guy has seen better times too the the, the dirty lines in the background that's my finger that's the lines of my finger um, you can see that the Oh, this is terrible without uh, support. That's a uh, that's that's the tip of ballpoint pen. You can see that this side of the cutting flutes is not very good anymore. It looks a little bit chipped. I can't tell very good because I'm looking at the viewfinder of the camera. But you get the idea. Um, there's a, a pretty horrendous ball end mill here. Doesn't look very good anymore. This is 
These are the cutting edges of one of my dull uh, 8 mm 6 fluke carbide amp mills. Here you can see one of the cutting edge chipped. It's chipped here and it's a little bit, I, I, it seems like I used it in a chipped state because here it's abraded. The, the shiny surface is abraded and the matte surface here that's just chipped away carbide. Same here. <laughs> in fact, I, I butchered all the cutting edges on this end mill almost. Oops. Uh, yeah, that's 50 bucks end mill there. I do not have a full build video on this stand um, when I built it. it um, I did a CAD model that I can show you and I have a bunch of photos of the build process and I will do a little bit of a slideshow to show you that. Okay, this is a quick view at the CAD model. I'm, I'm currently testing a Libre Designer Expert because I do not want to use Fusion 360 as my main CAD system because it stores the data not locally on my computer but it stores it on somebody else's computer and that, that's not acceptable for me. So as my main CAD I'm looking for something that stores the files locally, has no subscription model and is mine. So, and as far as I can tell, I really like uh, Libre Designer. Um, it's reasonably priced, has a, you buy a license and you own it, and then you can buy updates or do a maintenance fee. But that's uh, not the topic of this. Uh, this is the, uh, the microscope stand in CAD with the two arms here and here and this in front here this yellow piece this is the height adjusting or focus stage of the microscope that came with it this goes into the end of this arm the, the joints let's hide the arms the joints consist of these gray yellow highlighted bushings. These are Egos uh, low friction plastic bearings uh, which have excellent wear properties. And the pin in the center, this pin, the yellow pin, this is a piece of uh, hardened and ground shafting material. And all is held together by these two yellow highlighted washers and they I ground I surface ground the pin in here about 0.1 millimeter shorter than the measured distance from bushing top to bushing bottom so when the screws are tightened and the washers are pulled tight against the the joint everything is preloaded a little bit axially and that gives a very nice drag on the joint I did the same over here on the microscope holder or on the microscope's gauge. Uh, let's, let's see. These two yellow pieces again are the Egos bushings. And down here is the, is the washer again that preloads against the bearings. And on the vertical shaft, it's just sliding with two, with these two uh, bearings, and the arm rests on top of a shaft collar, which is not modeled here. And here is the drawing that goes along with the, with the microscope scan. Not very complicated, uh, just so I have something to work off in the shop and do not have to call up the 3D model all the time. Uh, which is quite annoying. The drawing, the drawing environment here in Alibra is really nice. It allows a lot more options than Fusion 360. In Fusion 360, the the drawing compartment seems like an afterthought. Uh, maybe because it's not as sexy as generative design or five-axis machining, but in my mind, that's a mistake. Um, 
you always need a proper 2D drawing if you make stuff. Okay, let's see how this indicator stand was made. It all starts with some uh, DOM tubing and some 30 by 30 box tubing cut to length. The square tubing is notched out with a hole saw to receive the DOM tubing in the end. Everything is cleaned and chamfered with a flap wheel and a carbide burr so the tick welding goes well over. Everything is clamped down with uh, different clamps on a, a miniature welding table for tack welding and for actual tick welding it completely all around. The finished arms after welding, the welds are not too pretty. Boring out the, the arms to final dimension, so they are a nice press fit for the Egos plastic bearings. Here are the plastic bearings already pressed in and the lathe parts are done, the, the bolt and the washers are finished. And here the microscope stand is basically assembled. It just needs some white paint for all the welded pieces or white powder coat, but powder coating is a problem now as the bearings are already pressed in, so I will probably just hit it with white paint. That's the Leica MC6 microscope with the stand. You will see this used in future a lot more. I hope that, can, that I can get a camera adapter. So, when not in use, of course, It's covered up so it doesn't get dusty or oily or something like that. And it's pushed back into its corner like this. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.